recording, I'm live streaming. If you haven't already downloaded the bulletin and would like to follow along, you can download either the regular print or the large print and the announcement sheet from the news and upcoming events page under the calendars tab of our website, www.gracelutheranchesapeake. Now that we are live streaming and recording, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship by listening to the prelude. Please stand as you are able. We begin this morning's worship with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is eager to forgive and who love who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Dear friends, Together, let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloveds of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us join together in our gathering song, Reckless Love. The words are printed in your bulletin and will be projected on the screen. If you're joining us at home, we do ask that you would mute yourselves while you make a joyful noise there. Yes. 
spoke a word you were singing over me you have been so so good to me before i took a breath you breathed your life in me you have been so so kind to me Overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it reaches me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the nine to nine. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Yeah. When I was your foe, still your love fought for me. You have been so, so good. I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found. Don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. There's no shadow. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow, there's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow. There's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up. Coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down. Lie you won't tear down. Coming after me. There's no shadow. There's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up. Coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down. Lie you won't tear down. Come. Oh, the overwhelming, oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the nine to nine. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, Love. Oh, the overwhelming, oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the nine to nine. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, this love of God.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, your bountiful goodness fills all creation. Keep us safe from all that may hurt us, that whole and well in body and spirit, and even when we're not whole and well in body and spirit, we may with grateful hearts accomplish all that you would have us do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from 2 Kings. Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man and in high favor with his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Aram. The man, through a mighty warrior, suffered from leprosy. Now the Aramians, on one of their raids, had taken a young girl captive from the land of Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She, named, she said to her mistress, mistress if only my Lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to give death to, or life that this man sends word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Just look and see how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. But when Elijah the man of God heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes. He sent a message to the king. Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me, that he may learn that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came, to his, came with his horses and chariots and halted at the entrance of Elijah's house. Elijah sent a messenger to him saying, go wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored, and you shall be clean. But Naaman became angry and went away, saying, I thought that for me he would surely come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, and would wave his hand over the spot and cure the leprosy. Are not Abana and Far Farapar, the river of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? He turned and went away in a rage, but his servant approached him and said to him, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you have done it? How much more when he all he said to you was wash and be clean? So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. His flesh was restored like the, fret, fret, bleh, the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean. Then he returned to the man of God, he and all his company, and he came and stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from 2 Timothy. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. That is my gospel for which I suffer hardship, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endured everything for the sake of the elect, so that they may also obtain the salvation that is in Jesus Christ with eternal God glory. The saying is sure, if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, we will also deny us. If we are faithless, we remain faithful. He remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Remember, remind them of this and warn them before God that they are to avoid wrangling over words, which does do good, but only reigns those who are listening. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approach proved by him, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of the truth. 
Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please rise as you are able and with the singing of the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region beyond Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out saying, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not 10 made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated and our youth and young at heart to come forward at this time. You want to sit crisscross applesauce right there on the floor? Oh. But if you sit out there, then everybody will be able to see the pictures. Go, can you guys go sit out crisscross applesauce with them? There you go. Can you all count to 10? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Awesome. That's an important number because today we are talking about 10 men who were healed. Here's the story. Jesus was walking toward Jerusalem he, and he neared the village. As he neared the village, two scarred faces popped up from behind the branches of a nearby tree. Do you see, do you see those faces? They popped up, they were hiding and then three more sad faces peeked out from behind a giant rock. Jesus looked into the distance and five more frightened faces stared out from behind a large leafy plant. There were 10 faces, each covered with little red bumpy spots. 10 men, some missing their fingers and toes, and they tried to warn Jesus, stay away, one shouted. Leprosy, another said. Keep your distance, another warned. Jesus knew the men were sick. He felt sad for them. Jesus, one man shouted, can you heal us? So they had a skin disease that was really contagious. And so they wanted Jesus not to catch it, just like we've been working so hard the last couple of years to make sure if we have COVID, nobody else gets it, right? But at the same time, they know. Awesome. 
And so we can be together again, right? But when we're sick, we stay away to try to make sure nobody else gets sick. But these 10 men knew that although they needed to stay far away, they still wanted to be healed and that Jesus could do that. But Jesus just said to them, go show yourselves to the priests. The men stood up and started walking into town, but then suddenly they stopped. Look, our spots are gone, one shouted. Look, look, another exclaimed. My fingers are growing and my toes are back. Soon all of the men were jumping up and down with joy. The men ran toward Jerusalem. They would show themselves to the priests for they were healed. One man though turned back to look at Jesus. He threw himself face down on the dusty road. Thank you, Jesus, praise God, thank you. He said so loudly that the birds flew up in all directions. Jesus laughed to see the man so happy. But where are the others? Weren't there 10 of you? Jesus asked, where are the other nine? Don't they want to praise God too? The man did not hear Jesus. He was too busy counting his toes and his fingers. Yes, 10 of each, just where they should be. Jesus said, go, you are well. The man jumped up and scurried after his friends. His voice filled the morning, praise God, he shouted as he ran fast as he could with the 10 toes that he now had to carry him. This is a reminder for us that God does all kinds of miraculous things for us, right? Heals us and makes us whole and forgives us and loves us no matter what. And it's good for us to get into the practice of saying thank you. So when you're praying to God, I would encourage you not to always just ask for things, but also say thank you. Shall we say a prayer together where we just thank God? What do you want to thank God for today? for giving us books. That's a great thing to thank God for. What else should we thank God for today? For giving us people to read us books, huh? Yeah, you like to read your books? Oh, nice. Yeah. Mari, Lydia, Anything we want to thank God for today? Anything you guys want to thank God for today? For giving us toys to play with? Yeah, and, and people to play with the toys with, right? So we can play together. Anything else? and video games, all good things to thank God for. So let us pray. And I would encourage you to fold your hands, bow your heads, close our, your eyes as we pray together. Dear God, thank you for all that you give us, especially for books and for people to read those books to us, for toys and video games and owls and for people to play with those toys and video games with. We ask all of this in your name, amen. Amen. Can you guys say amen? Amen. Amen, amen, all means the same thing, right? It means let it be so. We thanked God. Thanks for coming up. We might giggle at toys and books being what we thank God for, 
but they're all from God. They're all part of our daily bread. There is nothing to keep us from thanking God for them. Let us pray together. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. There is a famous saying that the internet doesn't really agree on who said it first. And it's been said in lots of different ways, but somewhere along the lines of it isn't about the destination. It's about the journey. Today's pericopes, the assigned readings for this Sunday, seem to suggest that the same might be true for healing, for being made whole. There's a whole lot of journeying going on in today's stories. Specifically, I want to focus on the gospel reading. As we join this story, Jesus is journeying in a border region between um, the Samaritan part of the land and the Jewish part of the land. He is on his way. And these 10 lepers make a journey to come and see him. And they show up and Jesus simply tells them, Go, show yourselves to the priests. Now, this was in line with Jewish law at the time. If you had leprosy and you were healed, then you needed to show yourself to the priest before you could enter the temple again. They had to verify that you were, in fact, healed and you were ritually clean. And I'll just say the Spark Story Bible makes it sound like leprosy of the medieval period where people are losing appendages. In the biblical time, leprosy was a much, had a much wider definition and was lots of different kinds of skin ailments. It's possible that it even would have gone down to teenage acne would have been considered part of leprosy. So anytime you had a skin deformity, you were cut off from the worshiping community. You couldn't go to the temple and worship. But so Jesus tells them, go show yourselves to the priests so that you can worship again, so you can be part of the community again. Their healing was not just about their own bodies, but then about being healed back into community and into worship. But what the story doesn't say is that they're healed first and then told to go show themselves to the priests. Jesus sends them on a journey to see the priests before the physical healing has seemed to take place. And it says, as they went, they had enough trust that Jesus knew what he was talking about. They went anyway, and as they went, they were made clean. They, their leprosy was gone. They could show themselves to the priests to show that they were ritually clean again, and they would be restored to the worshiping community. If I were on that journey, especially not knowing how long they had been cut off, I probably would have kept going on that journey to get to the destination. But this one leper stops. He takes a detour in his journey to go back to Jesus, to say thank you and to praise God. And this one leper is a Samaritan. Now, in, in modern terms, that would be like if we were all Eagles fans and that one leper was a Cowboys fan. <laughs> right? This is, the, this is the outsider. 
This is the foreigner. That's who comes back and says to Jesus, thank you, and gives praise to God as the source of his healing. This is a reversal that is we've seen become common in the Gospel of Luke over and over again. It's the last person you would expect shows faith. And here again, the Samaritan is the one that comes and says, thank you. Now, it's important for us to say thank you, just as I have explained to the kids, but I do think the other nine get a bad rap. They were told to go show themselves to the priests, and what are they going to do when they get to the temple and they can worship again? They're going to praise God. So it's not like they go away ungrateful. Their worship just doesn't look like the worship of this one. But this one that comes back gets a little extra. Jesus tells all 10, go show yourselves to the priests and on the way they are made clean. But when the one turns back, Jesus tells him that he is healed. And then says, your faith has made you well. Some translations say whole, others saved. He is not just physically healed, restored to the worshiping community in Jerusalem, but there's more that goes on. It seems to be a deeper healing and we hear that his faith has made him well, has made him whole, has saved him. Healing, wellness, wholeness is not always an easy thing. It's not always once and done. Sometimes it's a lifelong process, paralleling the life of discipleship. We hear the gospel for the first time, hopefully early in our lives, that Jesus' death and resurrection means that we are saved, that our sins have been forgiven, that we are justified in God's eyes. That's the once and done. We are made clean. But then we have the rest of our lives to try to bring our actions and our thoughts in lines with God's actions and thoughts, to be in relationship with God in a, in a way that God craves. The big churchy words for this difference is the difference between justification, our sins being forgiven, and sanctification, our being made holy our lives reflecting that state of grace. It looking like we are in a relationship with God instead of us just knowing it on the inside. It can be a lifelong process. Not even can be, it is a lifelong process. As we try to live our lives in response to the gift that we have been given, it's going to take some time, some practice, some trial and error. There will be missteps and failures. But we still remain forgiven in the midst of this. We do not change our lives, live a life of discipleship in order to earn anything. We already have the gift. We've been given everything that we need. But we live a life of, dis of discipleship. We walk the walk of faith. We strive to have our lives reflect that gift in order to say thank you for what we have already been given as we wait for what has not yet come when there will be no more leprosy that needs to be healed, when there will be no more illness of any kind, or injury, or heartache, or tears, 
or Morney. We live in this in-between region between God already saved us and we're waiting for Jesus to fully inbreak the kingdom once and for all. So as you journey through this borderland of already but not yet, I encourage you to get up, go on your way, knowing that you have been cleansed, that you have been healed, and that you've been given a gift of faith by the Holy Spirit, and that it is working on making you well and whole. God loves you no matter what. Let that permeate our lives as we go, holding on to what we can as we journey. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able and join with me in our song of the day, Baptized and Set Free. Again, the words are in your bulletin and will be projected on your screen. We are people created Chosen by God, then we're washed ever gently. Mercy and love, sin has power no more. Jesus opened the door to a fountain, bringing healing and miss and more. We are fed and we're nourished, filled and refreshed. Then our hunger returns and again we are blessed. For whatever the need, God is greater indeed. So shame always deeper than all of our need. We are nourished by water, all living things, and by life that the Spirit abundantly brings. As we journey toward home, may your presence be known. Precious river ever flowing, now carry us on. Now with praise and thanksgiving, we join the song. All are welcome, we gather to sing loud and strong. Not enslaved, but set free. From now on, all will be one in Jesus, one in water, baptized and set free. With the whole church, let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sin, resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all of God's creation. God will make a way when there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide, hold me closely by his side. 
With love and strength for each new day, He will make a way. He will make a way. Gracious God, we give you thanks for bishops, pastors, and deacons. Inspire leaders of the church to proclaim your mighty deeds, that your saving faith may be known to all. Majestic God, we give you thanks for land and water, seed time and harvest. Break down boundaries we construct between ourselves and the rest of creation. Bring renewal and restoration to places affected by pollution and deportation. Mighty God, we give you thanks for those in our community, nation and world, who live for justice and peace. Guide those who govern to act on behalf of those marginalized by race, ethnicity, or religion. God will make a way when there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to his side. With love and strength for each new day, he will make a way. He will make a way. Merciful God, we give you thanks that you hear the cries of those in need. Restore to community those who are stigmatized by illness, feel rejected, or who live in isolation. Send healing to all who suffer, especially for those on our prayer list and for those we name aloud or silently. Shirley, Travis, Fabian, Charlotte, Barbara, Dawn, Lori. Eternal God, we give you thanks for your faithful people who have gone before us to your glory. Renew our trust in your eternal promises of mercy, redemption, and new life. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. God will make a way when there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to his side. With love and strength for each new day, he will make a way. He will make a way. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of that peace with one another, both those that you are physically gathered with and across on site and our online community. We're doing a scan of the congregation with the camera so we can share the peace.
Each week we take time to acknowledge that all we have, including our toys and video games and books are gifts from God that can be used to do God's work in the world. And using that prompting from the kids, I want to highlight our book ministry um, this week that we you, uh, distribute books to kids and adults alike um, through our food pantry mainly, but um, in other ways as well as one way of, do, of being servants to all people, of, of sharing what God has given us, uh, those new or used books to those in our community so that they can also learn a love of reading and experience Christ's love through us. But keeping all the ways in mind that we uh, can use God's gifts to do God's work in the world, I invite Faith to Prayer offering prayer. Please stand as you are able. Let us pray. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of all these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. Amen. We begin our celebration of the sacrament of Holy Communion with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, our bread of life, our table, and our food. You created a world in which all might be satisfied by your abundance. You dined with Abraham and Sarah, promising them life, and fed your people Israel with manna from heaven. You sent your son to eat with sinners and to become food for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life giving for us and his rising from the grave, we await his coming again to share with us the everlasting feast. By your spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want. And by this bread and cup, make us the body of your son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus invites you to this table. Come, taste, and see. For those of you who will be communing from your pews or from your homes, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Your only son, no sin to hide, 
But you have sent him from your side To walk upon this guilty side And to become the Lamb of God Your gifts of love they crucified They laughed and scorned him as he died the humble king they named a fraud and sacrificed the lamb of god oh lamb of god sweet lamb of god i love the holy lamb of god oh wash me in his precious blood my jesus christ the lamb of god i was so lost i should have died but you have brought me to your side to be led by your staff and rod and to be called a lamb of god Oh, Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. Oh, wash me in His precious blood, my Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Oh, Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. Oh, wash me in his precious blood, my Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Please stand as you are able. God who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. You may be seated for our announcements. If you're joining us on Zoom and have announcements for the good of the gathered, please put a note in the chat so we know to spotlight you. Are there any announcements in the sanctuary? Thank you. I'd just like to thank everyone who was here yesterday at the flea market. Marlene did an awesome job organizing it, but without all the helpers that were there, it never would have gone off as great as it did. And before our expenses, we raised $1,430. Wonderful. So it was a success. Yes. Thank you all. And we will be splitting those proceeds between the Chesapeake We Care Resource Center, which uh, provides services to those experiencing homelessness in our community, and the Lisa Marie Justice Scholarship Fund of Grace Preschool. Come on up, Jordan. Um, on the blue spot. <laughs> 
Blue spot. Okay. There you go. Um, so I did just want to take a moment and thank everyone for their prayers. They worked. She's here. Um, she's healing beautifully. Um, we still have a, a road ahead of us, but there's nothing that we can't fix. And I did want to thank every single one of you for every prayer, every card, for the food that was brought for the kids at home. It truly, truly, truly meant so much to all of us. And thank you. Thank you. For those of you who are not joining us on site, Joby is here, real, live, in person. Um, and it is great to see her. And we will continue the prayers and love um, throughout your journey of healing. I really was not preaching directly about you. That was just the text that came up this week. I was trying to stay as general as possible. I hope you don't feel singled out. <laughs> Any other announcements? This week we have a couple of special things going on in our schedule. Um, Monday for Indigenous Peoples Day, uh, Columbus Day, everything is closed. No food pantry, um, the office is closed. No Monday Bible study, no bell choir. Tuesday we will have council meeting at 7 p.m. That'll be hybrid, both on site and online. Anybody is welcome to join in that council meeting anytime. Everybody has voice, just only council members have vote. Uh, normal Wednesday night uh, potluck and Bible study, but before that, the ladies will gather uh, for ladies lunch at noon on Wednesday at Metro Diner on Volvo Parkway. I am jumping ahead, aren't I? You can... You can see where, uh, where my, thank you. You can sign up in the narthex. There is a sign up there. There's also a sign up for other upcoming events that are listed on the announcement sheet, like grab your crap bingo. Um, in case you need a little explanation, that is something that you have at home that you don't want, but that's not actually trash. Wrap it up, bring it in, and we will play bingo until we run out of prizes because your crud is somebody else's treasure just waiting uh, to be gifted. Uh, so come for this fellowship event, wrap your crap bingo. Um, that is Sunday, October 23rd. So two weeks uh, from today after the a late traditional service. There's lots of other stuff on the announcement sheet in Grace Green's newsletter and in the scoop email. Check all those out. There's lots going on in October. I feel like I'm forgetting something, but I didn't write it down. So it's not in my brain. So we'll just go with it and I'll interrupt Morgan in 30 seconds, I'm sure. Uh, but for now, let's stand as we are able for our sending song which comes from our new hymnal supplement, All Creation Sings. It's 1097, 10,000 Reasons. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again whatever may pass and whatever lies before me let me be singing when the evening comes bless the lord bless the lord of oh my soul oh my soul worship 
with his holy name sing like never before oh my soul i worship your holy name you're rich in love you're rich in love and you're slow to anger your name is great and your heart is kind for all your goodness i will keep on singing ten thousand reasons for my heart to find bless the lord bless the lord of oh my soul oh my soul worship his soul Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.